Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm gonna to be showing you my sewing room. So if you follow me on social media, you know that I move my sewing room around all the time. And it's just because I get bored, I think, and I just want a change of scenery. A lot of times I'm moving it to try and be a little bit more functional, which is what I did this time. Um, sometimes I just like moving things around because it gives me inspiration and it gives me an opportunity to go through all my fabric. And all of that just kind of builds inspiration and gets me wanting to sew. So let's go ahead and take a look and I'll show you how I designed my new sewing room. So my sewing room is just off of our front door right here and it's just what would normally be the office space in our house. House. And so you have these nice double doors, which gives it a nice wide opening. Plus when I'm sitting at my sewing machine, I can actually see um, just out into the hallway. I can kind of see what's going on and I don't feel too closed off from the rest of the world. And those windows are also front windows, which means I can see out front and open them up for some nice fresh air. Now I get a lot of questions about these windows and my fabric and no, I haven't had any fading issues so far. We don't get direct sun from those windows because we have a covered porch and so I haven't had any issues with any of my fabric or quilts fading so far. And here we have Jaxi in my chair that I brought in here so that I could kind of sit and cross stitch and enjoy myself and he has pretty much commandeered the uh, chair. He does not hang out in his little basket anymore. He's moved on to bigger and better things. I do get a lot of questions about this wreath on my door. This is a free tutorial on my channel, so I will make sure to link it below, but it's just made from ripped up fabric scraps and it was just a fun project. So this is the back side of my door and I just have some little minis up there. This one is from my glory quilt. That one's from my vintage glory quilt and this one is from Freedom. And then over here I've got our farmhouse fall table runner I made. And then these are Ikea pegboards, which are super handy. I've got all of my little leftover skeins of yarn up there, just because I think it's pretty. And then over here are all my rulers. I've got some zippers, my mini irons, and some extra rotary trimmers. And then this little quilt right here is my spools quilt. This is a thimble blossoms pattern. And then right here is where all of the magic happens. This is my desk. Everything in here, by the way, is from Ikea, unless I say otherwise. So this chair is actually from Amazon. I will link everything below so that you can find it. Um, and then actually that little monitor stand is from Amazon as well. Uh, but I like having my computer here because I can see it right over here from my sewing station. So I can watch movies and all of those kinds of fun things. Plus I can see out my windows while I am working. Then next to my desk, I have my Stella light. Um, I actually have two of these. This one plugs in and my other movable one I have upstairs in my bedroom because I cross stitch and crochet in the evenings. Then on my ledge here, I've got a couple of these adorable little tin uh, mugs from Lori Holt. One is holding my pins, the other is holding my glasses because I'm old. Then over here, I've got these cute little measuring cups. These came as a gift from a friend of mine and they are holding some various supplies. And then as we move to the side, I've got my little bins of scraps. I don't actually love having these here, but I didn't have anywhere else for them. So they're there. Um, and then I've got a couple other fun goodies up here. There's another little mug and then these little jars that hold some other goodies, buttons and things like that. And then if you keep moving along, I've got my sewing machine. And then over here on this window, I have all of my scissors and just things that I use while I'm actually sewing. And these are all in those stash and stores by Fat Quarter Shop, which I love. These are little containers I found at Ikea and they hold all of my alphabeties. So love those. And then I have a couple tins right here. These are from Fat Quarter Shop as well. This one holds all my sewing feet and extra needles and tools. This one holds um, all of my pins and various things like that. Over here on the side of my machine, I have a couple of my little fabric bowls with my wonder clips and my quilt labels. And then I have this cute little yardstick box. I think I got it off Etsy. And that holds my bobbins, my replacement thread. Yes, I do sew with cones. Those are Orafil cones, 50 weight colorway 2021. I've got a cute little thread cutter right here. This mat is my big mat rotary mat and I will link it below. I also have a full video on it. So you might wanna check that out. This is one of my all time favorite mats and I love that it covers the majority of my tabletop, which makes my entire tabletop a working space. Then if we look at my sewing machine here, I have the Juki TL2000QI. I love this machine. It is a straight stitch only machine and um, but it is just a workhorse and it does a great job and I've got it sitting on my Ikea tabletops which I put together. So this is actually two tabletops 
So here you can see that we have two tabletops together. That line down the middle are the two separate tabletops, and I've just used the legs, screwed them in on both sides so my tabletop doesn't come apart. Here's a full view of the underneath of my table. So I've got two, four, six, seven, eight legs. So I've got two on each corner, one on each end, and then these two in the middle just for extra support for this table because it is a little bit wobbly. Um, and when you have that heavy machine on top of there going full speed, it can definitely start shaking. So the extra legs were definitely worth it. While we're under here, there is my spinning wheel. This is my Spinolution Echo spinning wheel, and I've had this wheel for quite a few years now, and I love it. I'm not sure if it's gonna stay right there because it is a little close to where I sit when I'm sewing, uh, but I didn't have anywhere else to put it right now, and so that's where it's living. Next to that is my yardage storage. So this is a two by four Calyx Ikea shelf unit, and this holds all of my yardage, and I have them all on those comic book boards and I think I showed that when I did my fabric storage uh, video on how I fold that up. I really like the comic book boards because it doesn't take up too much space. They're nice and thin and they just give the fabric a little more stability without taking up a whole lot of space because as you can see, it's pretty full. So a lot of people ask me how much backing and um, binding fabric I buy when I'm not following a quilt pattern. So if I see fabric I like that will fit either a binding or backing, well, I'll usually get about three quarters of a yard to a full yard for my binding. So far that's been plenty, but of course if you have a larger size quilt, you're gonna wanna look at that quilt pattern. For backings, I usually do about five yards. I find that's been plenty for the majority of quilts that I have done. If you need something larger, you can of course add an accent strip down the middle just to give it a little bit more size, but five yards is pretty good so that's what I keep on this shelf my one yard bindings and my five yard backings then on top of here I actually have my DIY uh, ironing or pressing station I do have a free tutorial on how to do this on YouTube a friend of mine cut this board for me and I love it it's the perfect size and it just makes for a nice big pressing area if I need to when I'm pressing a quilt I can pull it away from the wall um, but I usually don't even do that. I just roll the quilt up as I press it and it works really good. And then here I have my Oliso irons. So the pink one is my older iron and they just sent me the blue one. I think I'm gonna use the pink one for things like fusible um, backing and things. And then I'll use the blue one for just regular pressing. And then next to that, I've got a little uh, book stand and this is from Fat Quarter Shop. It's a Lori Holt metal book stand with a couple of my favorite books on there. Next to that are my Taylor's clappers, which I never used before, but now that I have them, I use them all the time. This one is from Modern American Vintage. It's my favorite one. It's actually quite heavy. Um, and then I have a couple from Riley Blake as well, and they just really help with getting your seams nice and flat. Then I have a little tool supply caddy and my little glass jar full of my mini charms. So next to my pressing station, I have another four x four cubby from Ikea. This one is holding all of my books, patterns. Um, it has, you know, other notions that I just don't use as much in there. And then up on top here, I have truck of the month cross stitch. I've got my other ones back here and I had to move it so I didn't give you any sneak peeks. I've got a couple cute little pin cushions right here. These are free tutorials on YouTube as well. And then this is actually from Ikea and it houses all of my fun little extra goodies for my fiber spinning. And so these are things that are like Stellina and just fancy additions to it. And then of course I've got a couple goodies on top as well. This is a new little pin cushion from Fat Quarter Shop. Now one thing I recently did was move this pressing station. It used to be over here and I've moved it over here. And I really think it's gonna be nice for me to um, be able to sew and just turn around and press and then come back and sew. I think that's gonna make it a lot faster. So I'm kind of enjoying this new setup. Hopefully it improves my speed and functionality for me. And then up here I moved my DIY design wall and I love it over here. I can fit all kinds of fun things on it. This is my Just Keep Sewing quilt that just released. This is a little sneak peek for something coming soon. And then over here is my Sweet Pea quilt. And this is where I change my quilts out all the time and just hang them up on the wall here so that when I film, I have different fun backgrounds. This one is available in my shop and I will link it below. As you can see, Jax is still vibing in his chair. So many people have asked about this chair. This is actually a glider that I got when my daughter was a baby. And so it's a baby glider. And that was back in 2003 from Babies Are Us. So I highly doubt they still have it, but I'm sure they have much fancier and better ones now. And I always get asked about this. This is my jelly roll rug. I do have a tutorial for that on my channel. So I will link that below as well as Jax's little rope bowl. 
So kind of shoved back here in the corner are my scrap buckets and I always get asked a lot about these. I do have a tutorial on how I organize them and these are all from Target. They're just in their organization section. Sometimes they're in the kids section, but they work great. They're stackable and these are the smaller size. And then above that, I've got my thread wall. These are just two of those wooden spool, like thread spool holders. I will link them below um, and I just have them on the wall using that 3M Velcro. And then next to that, I've got my truck of the month block. All of those are available in my shop. And then above that, I've got my YouTube 100,000 subscribers play button. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. All right. And then behind my chair right here in this cute little basket are all of my vintage trucks rolled up. And I've just got them hold together with these little slap braces. These are actually from Kimberbell and uh, they work perfectly for this. I also have a couple other things held together with that as well. And then they're just in this cute little trash bin. All right, let's move on to my main fabric storage. And this hasn't changed any, it just moved locations. So this is a five by five Ikea shelving unit, Calyx shelving unit. And I love it. It holds all my fabric kind of in one nice place. And so let's just start up here on the top. So I just keep some goodies up here. This green sewing machine is an Elna sewing machine. Um, I am not sure what year it's from. It's definitely an older machine. Uh, we bought it at a garage sale um, and it is, it works. It's a little rustic, but it works. And then over here, I've got some Tula pink stash. And then over here, I've got my 1935 Singer. And you guys saw this, I did a whole video on it. I've named it Clara after my grandma. And I actually still need to do a video tutorial with it because I haven't done that yet. But I will say, be careful if you're gonna start buying these because now that I have one, I sort of want other ones in different colors <laughs> because I love it so much. And by the way, these vintage machines so really, really well. Down below my machine, I have my little acrylic, I think it's called a Flossen store. This is from Fat Quarter Shop. I love it. It's got all of my embroidery floss in it. And then down here, I've got some fun binders. These have my patterns. Um, and so I have one for quilt patterns, one for sewing, like small bags and stuff. I have knit and crochet ones, and then I've got my cross stitch. And then on this top shelf, I have all of my Bonnie and Camille fabrics, and I recently reorganized them in rainbow color. And I absolutely love it. It's so much easier for me to go and find fabric without worrying about what line it came from. And I just can kind of mix and match and sew from my stash. Below that, I've got these nice bins that I got from Target and they hold all of my fat quarters. And then those little wire shelves underneath holding my fat eighth bundles are from Ikea. They're currently sold out. So if any of you guys see them in your Ikea, let me know because I still need a few more. On the next row, I've got those same bins and then some more of those wire shelves holding my jelly rolls. I love it because they are the perfect size. And then on this one down here, they didn't have any more of those so I had to just get some white ones I actually stole these from our pantry and they have all of my poppy cotton fabric on it uh, so I do need to get a few more of those these bins on the bottom are also from Ikea so they fit perfectly in the cubby holes and they hold all of my spinning fibers so as you can see those four over there on the right side are really full I need to get to spinning that one on the far left side holds all of my batting scraps so anytime I do a quilt project and I have leftovers I just put it in there and that way I can use them for smaller projects in the future Here's a close up of one of the white bins. As you can see, it holds all of my fat quarters, fat eights, smaller pieces like that that are too large for my scrap bin, but too small for my yardage wall. These two bins right here are rainbow sorted. Uh, the rest are actually sorted by designer and I like keeping the designer uh, together in one bucket because that way their fabric tends to match and I can just pull out a bucket and know that everything's gonna kind of match together. I also like having them in those buckets because it's really easy to pull out put on my table, sort out fabrics, put away any scraps and then put it back and it looks nice and tidy. To the right of my main fabric storage and behind my door, I have all of my yarn hanging and I also have my Cricut weaving loom. If there's any questions I missed, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you, but I will do my best to link all of the furniture and everything in the description box below the video. All right guys, that is it for my sewing room tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I actually really like the layout. Um, I think it's gonna be really functional. It's definitely gonna be faster. One of the things I had was my sewing uh, or my pressing table back here. And so I was having to walk around quite a bit just to press a tiny little item. And so that was kind of a pain, although it also got me up and out of my chair more frequently 
frequently, so I'm just gonna have to be more diligent about getting up and walking around with my pressing station right behind my machine. But all in all, I think it's gonna be a lot more functional. I can see my computer screen uh, so I can watch movies while I'm sewing, and I think it just makes it look a little more open and uh, just kind of nice in here. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you like it, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time. So if you followed me at all, you know that I move my sewing around. Um, so if you follow me on social media at all, you know that I move my sewing around. Can't talk. Ooh, sorry. Plus when I'm sitting at my sewing machine, I act, and a lot of people, th th th